make no. a big deal that Patrick's Le not here. podcast no. avec moi. C'est soi. <laughs> Let's see. Are you ready? I'm ready. I was born ready. Oh. What you're supposed to say. Gotcha. All right, here we go. The Daily Tech News Show with Tom Merritt is powered by Patreons like you. From five cents to 50 bucks, every contribution helps Tom and company produce fresh episodes of Essential Tech News. To learn more and support the show, visit patreon.com slash acedetect. Thanks for listening. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, June 23rd, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today is not Patrick Beja, as it usually is on Tuesdays. He's off. Having a good time with his wife, vacationing, a well-deserved break. Instead, Ms. Veronica Belmont, host of Dear Veronica on Engadget, co-host of Sword and Laser with me, is here instead. Veronica, how how do you feel filling in for Patrick Beja? Oui. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's a lovely scarf that you have. Hell, Veronica. It's Veronique. probably French that you're speaking. I'm no judge. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for making the effort. You know, that's the thing I like about Veronica Belmont, going above and beyond to fill in for Patrick Beja here. I do what I can. I know not a lick of French. That is about the extent of, of the French that I know. Although, um, un croissant du fromage, s'il vous plaît. I'm going to trust you that that's Et French. I don't café. hear language myself. Um, people tell me it's a French, and I believe them. <laughs> Let's take a look at the headlines. The Next Web reports Instagram has updated its app to let you find images by location. There's also a tab called Explore in the U.S. version that shows trending tags and locations, features a curated selection of accounts, uh, places, topics, all organized into pretty little collections. There was one for, uh, I think, airplanes or something when I was looking at it earlier. Anyway, the update rolls out to Android and iOS today. I already got mine. People are very excited about this. Why, Veronica? <laughs> It seems like it's their, their, their big leap into events happening in real time and kind of being able to see all of the photos and videos from, from things happening as they occur, which is not really something Instagram was totally known for. I mean, you could search through hashtags, but this kind of brings it more on par with, with Twitter search for hashtags and things happening and being live tweeted. And I think that's a, that's a big step for them. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what we heard about with Project Lightning and Twitter uh, happening later this year. And so all of these social networks are trying to be more consumable for people beyond just their inner circle. Uh, and, and so I'm glad to know that there are towering rocks going on right now, thanks to Instagram, uh, yeah. both in Glacier Point and Bryce Canyon and Devil's Tower. Oh, it's like Close Encounters looking at the Devil's Tower thing. I, I don't know. Um, a rocks. I get... I, I, I like Instagram. has pretty pictures. What, I'm not going to judge. Sure. <laughs> New scientist reports on an experimental algorithm from Facebook that recognizes people in photographs whose face is hidden. The algorithm looks, like, looks at other features like hair, clothing, body shape, and pose. The neural network has 83% accuracy in a test using 40,000 photos pulled from Flickr. That's weird. Why are they using Flickr? Uh, they probably just want to... Uh, test photos that they had the rights to because Flickr, you can say, give me all the public domain stuff. Couldn't they just uh, use Facebook photos? Pictures well, but see, Facebook? here's the thing, right? When they start using okay, their own data, that? everybody gets prickly like, wait a minute, you're using me in experimental things? I, right. they've got, you know? So yeah. this is a very safe way to do that, I think. Uh, and this is research. This is not a feature that they've added. So don't freak out yet. Just wait <laughs> to freak out till later when they actually add it to the service. Uh, they're just developing the technology in the lab right now. But it does raise the question of how should this responsibly be implemented if you can identify anybody in a photo, even if their face is hidden. All those movies where people hid their face so they could avoid facial recognition, forget it. Facebook just leapfrogged you. Yeah, I mean, you definitely have to be up to date on your privacy settings and, and be aware and kind of you know, noticing when people are tagging you and stuff. You can always untag yourself, but I guess it depends on, on how nervous you really are about being in photos. I mean, that's, that's a big issue with a lot of people. A lot of people hate being tagged in pictures, and I'm sure they'll implement some kind of thing where it says, just never tag me. Never, if you yeah. find me, don't tag me. And yeah, don't allow people 
to tag. Oh, yeah. They're gonna, yeah. but they're gonna have to take some action like that, right? Because mm -hmm. this is a genie that you let out of the bottle. Once it exists, it's going to exist, and somebody's gonna use it. I don't think this is the kind of thing where you can say stop, stop researching this and never add it because somebody will. Uh, if nothing else, the NSA will use this for sure. So you just got to get used to the fact that in a photo, anybody could probably be identified in the future, at least with at least 83% accuracy. Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy, on the positive side though, pretty crazy cool technology that they can just look at a photo the way we look at photos. Like we can look at a photo and not see a person's face and go, oh, I'm pretty sure that's Veronica because mm -hmm. I'm familiar enough with, you know, the clothes she wears or the way she holds herself or whatever, right? Uh, and And that may be also a scary part, but I think it's a fascinating part that we're getting AI that's as good at that kind of recognition as the human brain is. This is kind of one of those things where I think, oh, wow, the technology is really great, but people are going to be scared about it. But it's, it's, it's happening, and you kind of just have to learn to adjust with it. Um, you know, these, these technologies are, are appearing left and right in all sorts of different places, you know, whether it be closed-circuit television, whether it be something like Facebook, whether it's, you know, cameras in, in TSA, security checkpoints. I mean, all these things exist and are happening. It just depends on kind of how you react to them and respond to them and, and protect yourself yourself. Yeah, let's get let's get right to the discussing how to properly go about using the tools. I think mm -hmm. that's good. I like that. I would like to know more about how this works too. Maybe I'll ask Veronica. <laughs> CNET reports Google Play Music has launched a free ad supported version of the service. A blog post introduced the product and was written by Songza CEO Elias Roman. If you don't remember, Google bought Songza last July. Curated radio stations around uh, what you'd expect mood, genre, decade, or activity will be offered. They'll also do a Pandora like thing where you can pick a song and it'll create a station with songs similar to that song. In fact, uh, I read one headline that said Pandora stock had taken a little dip. I don't know if it stayed down. The free service launches in the US first on the web today and uh, later this week in the Android and iOS versions and then in other platforms and countries later on this year. Did you try it out yet? I, yeah, I'm already a Google Play subscriber. So yeah, I've tried it out by paying for it. Uh, nah. But mm. yeah, they say they're going to be very light on the ads at the beginning because that's the thing. If you pay for the service, you don't get ads. And they one 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 thing in the CNET article said that at first they would just have a pre-roll when you start the station and then that would be it, at least for the time being. Yeah, it's kind of like Spotify does every half an hour, but they really feel so kind of in your face in the middle of a listening session and, and jarring. Um, I don't pay for it anymore. I've let my subscription kind of lapse out while I wait to try out Apple Music uh, to see how that goes. But yeah, I, I'd be willing to give it a try. I, I, I have not done much with the uh, Google Play Music department. I haven't really tested it out at all. I think I bought one album there when it first launched. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's getting to be a very competitive category, more competitive than it ever was. And, and I think that's good for consumers, um, not necessarily always great for artists, though. My feeling about the artists uh, is that they really need to talk to their labels, first of all. And second of all, part of the problem with streaming services is we don't have critical mass, so we really can't say how much money can be made. Lots of money is made for writers off of radio play because it's massive. These mm -hmm. services will, I think, eventually get massive, and then I think the ability to pay artists will become less of an issue. It'll become more of an issue of, hey, we have a lot of money, how do we appropriately split it up? Rather than right now, it seems like, uh, I'm not getting that much money out of what seems like a lot of plays, but it's still a very small percentage of the the total possible audience of music listeners that are using these services. Right. All right, moving on. PC Mag reports that the task management app Todoist is getting a refreshed Android version in the material design style. The simplified Todoist app includes a quick quick add option and allows users to include start and end dates to capture recurring due dates. Dropbox also updated its Android app using material design, including the ability to take a photograph right from the file where it will be stored and move, rename, and favorite options on the info pane. Uh, both apps are available for download in Google Play today. I don't use Todoist, do you? I don't think you use no, Wunderlist, I right? No, I use Wunderlist. Wunderlist. I Wunderlist. use, no, I use um, Simple Note, actually. I uh, think it drives me crazy that you do that still. I don't know I why. know. It's just, I know. It's, it's efficient. I get it. It just makes me crazy. Uh, but... Uh,
I like, I like, you know, reading about Todoist and, and the ability to like schedule tasks and push tasks to your calendar and all that stuff made me think, well, maybe I should give it another shot. Uh, but mostly this is just because they wanted to make it look nicer and fit in with the new material design, which is a decent design. I, I think Google did a great job with material design. I'm very excited about the Dropbox having material design and the ability to be able to manage uh, files directly in the app better. A lot of times I just don't launch Dropbox on my Android tablet because I'm like, well, I might as well just go to my laptop because I can do everything I want with it there. So the closer right. they get to that on the tablet, the better for me. Totally. The next web reports that it's Amazon Echo device is now available to all U.S. customers. Don't need to be invited anymore. The voice control device has added support. Uh, if you don't, if you missed these stories, uh, for Pandora, Audible, Wemo, Ift, Google Calendar, all since launch, costs 180 bucks and begins shipping to everybody July 14th. Alexa, add chocolate chips to shopping list. That's going to be fun, seeing if we can turn on and off people's Alexa units from remote <laughs> remote chat. Kind of like I've added chocolate chips stuff. to your shopping list, I hear regularly in my house. Hey, Siri, tell Veronica she's awesome weekly. <laughs> A reminder to tell me she's awesome. Did weekly. that work? Did that work on your, on your series, guys? Did it <laughs> okay, work? Okay, Google. All right. Now, we've we got to stop trolling the audience. That's not, that's not good. <laughs> oh, uh, no, but, I, you know, I think the Amazon Echo is a secret success. Uh, they did it right by offering it in private beta because if they'd come out with it in massive sell, I think everybody would have thought it was a disappointment. But more people have bought it, tried it, and liked it than I think folks suspected. I use it to manage my shopping list. I think it's great to be able to just be in the kitchen, see something's out in the fridge and just say, hey, add this to my shopping list. Uh, I do use it uh, for music as well because it acts as a Bluetooth speaker. Mm -hmm. I was excited about the Google Calendar integration, but I don't really find myself using it that much. For adding events? Yeah, well, at, or, or telling me, like, what's my next appointment? Which is one of the things it can do. Uh, well, if you've got a watch, you probably don't need that because it's going gonna, it's gonna to let you know when you're, when you're due for, for an appointment. Um, I'm excited to about else. it, too. I, I want one. I have not, I did not get one as part of the beta program. I didn't ask for one, but I, I didn't, you know, I haven't used it yet personally. Um, but it's, it's definitely on the list. I can't tell it to add itself to the list, though, which is problematic. Right. You need to get one so you can tell it to add another one so that you can put one in the other room. That's the other thing right. is like we okay. had it in the living room and it's like, uh, sorry, Sonos has much better sound than you, Alexa. So we put it in the kitchen because that's what I was using it for was the shopping list anyway. Totally. IBM is opening up its Chef Watson web app to the world. It's been almost a year since IBM teamed up with Bon Appetit magazine to begin working on the app, and it has spent the last 11 months testing it out. The app lets you choose at least one ingredient and then suggest recipes using that ingredient. You can also choose a particular type of dish or style of cooking. When you find a recipe you like, you can save it to a folder in your account. Uh, you can take a look at ibmchefwatson.com. Yeah, I, I was sort of mildly intrigued by this when, it, when I first read about it. Like, oh, Watson will have some interesting recipes. I wonder what it came up with. You know, because all the stories were like, oh, uh, compare it to Chef Ramsay and see what creations it comes up with. And then I got there and I'm like, oh, no, this is much better than that. This is, hey, I have uh, some chicken breasts and broccoli. What can I make with this? Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. I've been looking for that like fix for that trick. I know I, there's a lot of different like recipe apps out there and they all kind of do iterations of that. But if this really is good as everyone's saying, I think I'm going to be using it a lot more because I feel like, I don't know why, I just feel like it's going to be smarter. Watson is pretty damn smart. Right. And, and all of the apps that do this are somewhat limited in how hmm. they can do it. Uh, either the recipes they return are just not very good uh, or they or they can't find things often or you can't really put the ingredients you want. You have to choose from a pre-selected list because I've tried a few of them too. This one does exactly what I want, which is put in like these are the things in my fridge and then give me like a load of recipes, some of which just use those ingredients, some of which like, oh, you'll have to add this or this or that and then you'll have this amazing dish. I'm definitely going to give this a try. Uh, chat room is reporting that I did turn on their series. <laughs> Paul Apologies. Has a screenshot that says, everyone. Hey Siri is awesome weekly. <laughs> <laughs> and you just did it again. Yes, it worked, kind of. But, you, you know, sure. use your power wisely. <laughs> use my power for good, maybe. <laughs> the Independent reports that a German law prohibiting the sale or display of erotic materials during daylight oh. hours is now being applied to ebooks at ebook stores. 
The change relates to a legal complaint regarding a German erotica ebook called Schlauchgelüste, which means pantyhose <laughs> cravings. Uh, adult ebooks will only be allowed to be sold between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., and violators can be fined up to 500,000 euros. I definitely read that is between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., and vibrators can be fined up to <laughs> Well, that's an honest mistake given the nature of the story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, in my mind immediately goes to like, well, what if you set your server time to a different time? Does that exempt you from this? Can the, you know, can web, how do the websites know it's 10 p.m.? But I guess really it would just be a matter of like, well, it, you, you're selling to this region and this region's time is this and we all know this time and we can timestamp that. Uh, it's just a weird rule. Like, so got to shut down your website from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Sorry, folks. I need, yeah, I want to learn more about this because I want to know exactly what is so bad about Schlauchengeluste. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm closer, but um, well, it's, 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 it's erotica, right? And, and the law originally was meant to prevent minors from seeing porn when they just walked into a bookstore, right? They're like, you have to keep that stuff under the counter until after six o'clock uh, when the kitties won't be running around. And the, and the, I, guess, I guess it kind of makes logical sense. Like, well, the internet's open all the time and kids are on the internet. So I just don't know if you can really control it this way, but it's an interesting attempt. Hmm. Germans wanting to control something weird. So weird. <laughs> so weird. I wonder, I re would really like to talk to the uh, German vaginal fantasy con con contingency. And oh see yeah. They're uh what, what's going on over there if that's I'd like, be interested what they say lots of our books yeah report back yeah TechCrunch reports that Alibaba will fold its first effort at a U.S. e-commerce company Eleven Main into social shopping service OpenSky Alibaba will also fold uh, its logistical enterprises along with Octiva Vendio and Single Feed into OpenSky and become a 37% owner of the combined company the new combined businesses will have inventory from 50,000 and millions of shoppers. It's not clear if 11 Main will continue to exist as a separate site or brand, and the deal is set to be finalized at the end of July. A little bit of a retreat for Alibaba. They've, they've been trying to make headway into the U.S. market. Uh, you often hear stories about U.S. companies trying to make headway into the Chinese market, but the reverse is also true. Everybody wants to sell in the markets that have customers that they can't access yet. Uh, and this is... A step back for them. I guess they realize that it's not as easy as it looks and they need a little help. And someone r described it as go on a date before you get married, mm. uh, kind of implying that by taking a 37% in open sky, it gives them a chance to see if this will work. And if it does, they might invest further. Yeah, I, I you know, it's, it's maybe it's just my own ignorance, but I am, I am unaware of all of those brands other than Alibaba itself. Open so. Sky apparently has a decent customer base, uh, but it's it's all about like having people guide you to popular items that are available on the platform. Mm -hmm. It started as a way for bloggers to be able to have a store without getting the lower referral fees that you would get from a place like Amazon. Is it kind of like similar to uh, Shopify and things of, of that nature? I don't know how similar it is to Shopify because I haven't really used it much myself, but okay. it's, it's more of the like, hey, see what's popular. We have guides that will show you that, or you can just mm -hmm. look at how many likes products are getting. Uh, and if they have if they have like a you know a back end for auction type stuff too, I mean that's eBay is a is a you know mm -hmm. million pound gorilla that they have to fight against in in terms of that market. That's you know many have tried, few have succeeded in in trying to do auctions online just because of the prevalence of of eBay itself. Um, so it's not I guess it's not too surprising, but you would think of them Alibaba being such a massive and and well resourced company that they'd be able to you know really put up a fight for a little bit longer. Who knows? Yeah, I, this, I mean, they're not giving up. This is, this yeah. is their way of, of sort of sensibly retreating. Yeah, but without yeah. withdrawing. Uh, and, and it's always hard to take a company into a market that you don't understand because everything's different. People have different tastes. They have different taboos, different things that they don't like, different interpretations of messaging. Uh, so yeah, it makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. 
Let's take a look at our subreddit. Uh, a lot of these stories came out of our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com, as they do every day. We always like to highlight a couple of them, though. Uh, so get in there and vote. If you don't, you don't have to be like combing the internet and submitting stories. We have lots of people who do that, although we welcome you to do that. Uh, but if nothing else, vote on a few of them. Let us know which ones are of interest to you. Metal Freak sent us this one. Uh, it seems the U.S. Navy is going to pay Microsoft $9.1 million to keep approximately 100,000 Windows XP machines afloat, oh, according to PC World. Uh, <laughs> why are you laughing? Because that's it's it's just because Windows kind of XP. Because well, it's Windows XP, and they're like, no, please, please don't take us off Windows XP. We can't deal. Like it's not, is, it's not quite that bad. The Space and Naval Warfare like Systems Command. Security. No, Tom, don't ruin my. my <laughs> we won't let it go of XP. It was the only good one. Oh, nothing's gonna work. We're gonna launch all the bombs. The Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command signed the contract earlier this month uh, because they want access to security patches for Windows XP, Office 2003, Exchange 2003, and Windows Server 2003. Server 2003 is the only one that hasn't expired, uh, and so you have to pay Microsoft for patches on all the others. Navy has begun a transition away from XP back in 2013. They just need time to finish executing that plan, so they're, they're not quite as tight gripped on XP as possible. Uh, XP systems are still connected to both the Nippernet, which is the U.S. government's IP network for non-classified information and the SIPRNet, which is the network for classified information. So you can see why they want to make sure they keep these things patched as much as possible. Nippernet. <laughs> Star Fury Zeta shared a I want one of those stories with us and Gadget is reporting that UK based Mala Aeronautics is cooperating with Maryland based defense firm Service Engineering Co and is developing a hover bike for the US Army Research Laboratory. Wow. Current design features horizontal two pairs of adducted rotors placed in tandem, one in front of and one behind the pilot seat. The project aims to create a new class of tactical reconnaissance vehicle, TRV, that can replace some work currently done by helicopters. I won't you want one of those? necessarily get this chance, but I not only want one of these, I want to race it around in Muir Woods. Ooh. I would want to race it around on like you know, the salt flats. Like well, yeah, that would be salt. fun too, as long as you're not trying to, you know, relive Return of the Jedi. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Which is what I would be doing in Mirrorwoods. Uh, no, yeah, I would want to ride these anywhere that I would be allowed to ride one. Uh, that, that sounds amazing. And, and this company uh, did a miniature version of this with a robot riding it on Kickstarter. So this is a, an example of, of a Kickstarter turning into a real company that now has like industrial or in this case military applications meant to make people safer it's a good story that's pretty cool yeah and that's a look at the headlines i remember back in 2008 when veronica came to me and said i really want to send an angry letter to somebody on email and i know i shouldn't and i said just type it out on email but don't put anything in the to field and then delete it but that was dangerous advice, because what if Veronica had then accidentally sent it? Well, if it was today, Veronica could use Google un Undo Send. Uh, to oh, if she, Tom. If I, don't remember, I do remember actually having that conversation with you one time. That true is story. pretty funny. It is a true story. And it's very therapeutic to do that, by the way. I do it um, myself. Do you? I was amazed by how many people are really, really excited about this. I tweeted about this story this morning, and the response was pretty incredible. Um, people just like the chance to kind of take back some of the power. Uh, so in case you didn't know, um, Undo Send was part of the Labs project for a really long time, for the past couple of years. 2009, I believe, actually. Yeah, we actually, I went and dug up the Buzz Out Loud episode where Rafe and Molly and I covered it. When yeah, it so came into the Google Labs. It's been around, um, and you know, I don't know how often people are actually using it, but now it is a built-in feature to Gmail and to any of the, uh, you know, if you have Google Apps for business, if you're using a domain, you can use it as well. Um, and essentially, it just gives you the ability to set an amount of time that you can recall that email. But it's not really recalling the email. It just gives you a buffer time, so a 10-second, a 20-second, a 30-second buffer before it actually sends that email through the server 
servers out into the world. Um, so, you know, when I when I first started talking about it this morning, people were saying, "Oh gosh, is this a security thing? Are they holding on to our emails for that amount of time and then sending them off into the world?" Well, no. I mean, no more than they already are once they're sent. Um, so, yeah, it just gives you the ability to say, "Oh, hold on a second. I, I that isn't who that's supposed to go to, or that was a very unfortunate autocorrect mistake." going out into the world, you know, these things happen. Um, so it just gives you that chance to hit that little undo button after the message has been sent, a uh, notification pops up at the top of your window after you send out that email. Now, I haven't seen it show up for me. So if you're looking in your Gmail and you don't see it yet. You actually uh, probably have. So what happens is if you send an email, you can test one to me right now. I looked in settings. Screen, oh, you don't I'm see it in your settings at all? Yeah. Okay, me, so it's in try. your... <laughs> it's definitely, it should be in your settings already. Um, All right. So go I'm going to send a regrettable email. Nope. Okay. Did, did not, you're going to get this regrettable email. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, good. But you haven't seen it in your, well, you have to turn it on first. <laughs> yeah. And then it's not in my settings to turn on yet. So, okay. so I, I found it's probably it. rolling out all day to everyone on Gmail in the U.S. slowly. As much probably. As yeah. I see it directly under, um, I just saw it earlier today. Okay, so you do have it. So there, we that'll set a few people's fears to rest. If you're like, wait a minute, maybe they're lying. They're not. It's so coming. yeah, if you go into settings under general, it's just under, uh, it's above stars and below send an archive. And it just yeah, says undo send. I have nothing send. there yet. Okay. All right. Well, then you haven't gotten it yet, but it is, it's, you know, pretty easy. Just turn it on and save and you're good to go. I can turn it on at labs, I guess, if I really wanted to rush to get it. But... <sighs> I am of a split mind of what this means that people want it so badly. I'm not going to debate, like, you could, you could say, like, how much can you do in five seconds? And you're thinking of, like, you know, you can't, what, what often happens is you realize you sent something wrong later, right? And this isn't going to help you with that. This is when you're moving too fast, right? Yep. You type something, you press send, and then you look at the subject line or you look at the two line and realize immediately, like, oh, no, I, I, I sent it to the wrong Veronica, uh, you know, and, and, and then you can hit that undo. I get that, but... Is this just enabling bad behavior? Like, shouldn't we be training ourselves to just slow down and not work that fast? Isn't that the problem with the with technology these days? And this is just like pushing us to like, oh, go faster anyway. It doesn't matter. You'll be able to undo. I, I think you're venting some of your own your own your own stuff into this, Tom. I Thank think you. It's I very think therapeutic. I feel better now. Do you good? Um, I I well for for your first point, I set mine to the longest possible. 30 seconds. The mind goes to 30 seconds, and that way it gives me a little more leeway time to realize any potential mistakes. Um, yeah, you know, I, I hadn't thought about your second point, which is, is it encouraging us to move too quickly? I don't think any more than anything else is. Um, I think it's recognizing that sometimes that happens. I don't know if there's a way to untrain that that Google can really help us with. This is just for me giving back some of that, some of the power over the machines, some of the, the feeling of helplessness when something goes out into the world and you realize it just a nanosecond too late that you've done something wrong. And, you know, this happens, I, a lot of us feel this way about social media, about Twitter, about Facebook, about things that, you wish you could take back almost instantly. You know, whether it's a response in anger or whether it's an error or a, an incorrect link, an incorrect hashtag even. You know, we, we work so hard at kind of curating. A typo. Tom knows absolutely nothing about that. Uh, you know, we, we spend so much time kind of self-curating, uh, and yet so much of what we put out there is permanent on the Internet. And so for me, this kind of, even just in email form, gives me... A little bit of a sense that I have some kind of control over whatever human error I make and put out into the world, even if it's only for 30 seconds. It, it gives me that little sense of, of well-being back into, into my email experience. Uh, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't really, I, I think you can set some of this on the client side through different apps as well if you're using like Outlook. Um, but I haven't, you know, I don't think it's built into AirMail. I don't know if it's built into other like Mailbox, other popular Gmail focused web cl uh, email clients. Um, but I, I can see that as being something that if it's not available, will be built in shortly to take advantage of this as it is an official feature now. Um, so yeah, I think it, I don't see a downside to it personally, but I, I'm, you know, if there is one, I'd be very interested to, to hear what, what those people have to say.
Yeah, I mean, the, the criticisms that I've seen people raise are, uh, first of all, it's not actually undoing send. It's just delaying your mail. And that whatever, that's fine. That doesn't, it's a, that it's doesn't actually it make it. It wants to recall it. I mean, if you prevent it from being sent, it's undoing that send and giving you a second chance. It's undoing your pressing of the send button, not right. the actual delivering of the email. Right. Uh, that's a fine point. We could debate that all day. It's called undo send because that's what makes sense to people. And it's the way right. they think of it. The other thing is that the delay, the 30-second delay, does delay your email going out, but we don't use email as that time-sensitive of a communication. Yeah, if you want that, you should be using Slack. If you want instantaneous or instant messenger, or, or yeah. instant messenger or whatever, it doesn't, there's, there's other solutions for that. So I'm looking at it as like, oh, I'm the guy who makes typos, right? Uh, does this actually make me laxer about that because I know, oh, I can spot it after I press send and undo it. And is that a bad thing? Or if it actually catches more of them and stops misunderstandings? Or I could see when you were talking, I could see a point where this would actually give me a little relaxation to know like I've got a safety net to look over these things, which might actually make me in sort of a weird way, pay more attention to what I'm writing because I know, I don't know, I, I think it could actually have a positive effect because it, it just relaxes you to know like, all right, uh, I, I, I know I have the undo send, which makes me think about the undo send, which then makes me think about what I'm writing, which could make me less likely to make a typo. It's kind of like the difference between pre-recording something and recording it live. Mm. Like you want to get it done right the first time, but at least with the pre-record, you know, if you mess up, you can, you, you can have a little do-over. You know, even if you yeah. really want to go live to tape, um, but that's maybe not a good analogy for everyone out there. Um, but it makes sense for us. That's yeah, all or you know, I, I think when people take photos and stuff, there may be a similar. Uh, you know, knowing you can delete a photo has definitely changed things yeah. for people versus like, hey, it's on film. This is the one chance. That's, that's it. That's all we got. Yeah. Uh, but Tom, never change. Your t your typos make you part of. You know, that's part of who you are at this point. Don't ever change. Think just make you. sure you check the Sword and Laser blog post before I publish them live to the feed. I would have I would never heard you that. say that before. I don't know why you would finally bring <laughs> that up now. Hey, speaking of Sword and Laser, it's a show that Veronica and I do about uh, science fiction and fantasy books. And our pick of the day is from Justin C. Uh, and is a science fiction trilogy, the Stephen Baxter Manifold Trilogy. He says it's probably my favorite current-ish sci-fi. Uh, first volume, I think, came out in 2000. Uh, Justin says, for fans of those who love massive space operas and well-founded yet thoroughly creative fiction, check out the Stephen Baxter Manifold trilogy. And it reminded me, I picked up uh, Manifold Time several years ago on someone's recommendation. Maybe it was Justin C's. I don't know. Uh, and I, I, I need to get back to reading it. Of course, we always have too much stuff to read. But good suggestion. Thank you for that, Justin. Appreciate it. And if you'd like uh, more science fiction and fantasy recommendations, you could always check out Sword and Laser back on. Yeah, I, Stephen Baxter is great. Um, I haven't read any of his works, but I've heard it recommended to me so many times. Um, I, maybe that'll be a future pick. I'm For sorry. Sword I'm, I'm, I'm uh, typing typo solidarity with Tinvec in the chat room. <laughs> uh, send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and you can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Did you spell it correctly no, when you I typed back to him? No, did definitely did not, huh? Nope. On purpose this time. Sure. This time. So we David wrote in and said, I was listening to your discussion yesterday about Taylor Swift's open letter to Apple and how it's only right to pay artists for their work. Too bad she doesn't practice what she preaches, and he sent uh, a link to a blog post about the photo rights that Taylor Swift requires at her concerts. Now, I had this link in the show yesterday, and it's my mistake for forgetting to bring it up. But essentially, what Taylor Swift does, and she is not alone in this, but what she does uh, and what her organization does is for news photographers coming to cover her concert for a news outlet, like a newspaper, you are allowed to take your photos and use them in the news outlet once and you have to agree to surrender all rights to the photos to Taylor Swift and her organization from there on out. Now, a lot of people are looking at this and saying, hey, wait a minute, I'm a photographer, a news photographer, and if the newspaper doesn't run my photo, I don't get paid. So I have one chance to use that photo. If the newspaper decides not to use it, I've now worked for free. You're talking about artists getting paid. What about photographers getting paid? Veronica, do, do you think there's some some legitimacy to pointing out hypocrisy in that case? It's, yeah, I mean, it, it's 
two different discussions for sure. And and uh, Taylor Swift's camp has kind of rebutted a lot of this, um, you know, kind of going into the legal uh, wording of the contract. Um, let's see. I want to see exactly where. Um, Talk amongst yourself for a second. Well, so, I can find so what, what the Swift, so the def, you know, the, the defenses could be many. One is that hey, this, Taylor Swift is holding a concert. It is her private event. She can decide, and her organization can decide who to let in and who can't. Just like any musician, uh, when you buy a ticket, there's always an agreement on the back that restricts what you can do while you're at that concert because it's a private event. Whereas music is is basically vending something, and it's a, a business transaction, not a not a pub, public or private event. Right. It's a different situation. So it's a little bit apples to oranges. Yeah, uh, they're, they're, the Swift's team has, uh, they, they hit back on Sheldon's grievances, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Um, a spokesperson for Swift said that the standard photo agreement has been misrepresented and that it clearly states that any photographer shooting the 1989 World Tour has the opportunity for further use of said photographs with management's approval. So, you know, I mean, there is... It, it that's still with management of, approval, though, which is but, different than, I, these are my photos, I get to do with them what I want, which is the argument being made. And I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, I agree with you that it's apples to oranges, but I'm not well spoken enough in, in legalese to kind of figure out how how tying these, these this contract is. I mean, they still own the artist, still owns the copyright to the images. Taylor Swift does not own the copyright to the photographs taken at the concert. That much is certain. But what they're allowed to do with those photos after the fact, I think, is what is is mainly in question. Yeah, they're they're agreeing to a license a permanent right. license of their own works that they've created by being allowed into the stadium. And I can see the argument both ways. If, if I am a performer, I'm going to say, look, I am letting you in for free uh, to my event. I'm mm -hmm. not going to let you go out and profit on my image and my performance image uh, without getting a cut of that. And so that's why they're saying we need, you need our approval. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also understand the photographer saying, I'm a news photographer. I am covering an event that is live. Sure, you can stop me at the door if you want, but once I'm inside, I should be allowed to do and distribute with my my work, my okay. photography work. But it's not a I public want. event. You know, right. if, this, if it was an outdoor concert that anyone was available to attend and news organizations were there, they can't they had I don't think they have any say over that kind of thing. But if it's a closed paid event, you know, I think they are, you know, it sucks. But I think they should, you know, they're, they're falling under the restrictions of the event and they are obligated to follow those restrictions. Maybe it's hypocritical, but I think it's, it's you know, it's clearly it's well within the Taylor Swift camp's rights. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think there's any argument there. You're right. Yeah, it, it definitely is just two different, totally different things. And I it just seems kind of nitpicky at this point. You know, I and I don't even know why someone would attack her on this. I mean, I get it. You know, not not everybody's perfect, but she's really trying to help independent artists you know make a buck off this thing well i think that i think that's why she's getting some heat for it is that she set herself up as i'm not doing this for me i'm doing it for artists and these are artists who are saying yeah but you've made my job harder in this particular instance and there is a compromise position right you can say mm -hmm. with properly accredited news photographers we will give you the license to use these for you know five years or, or something like that. We'll just automatically give you that license instead of requiring you to go through the bureaucracy of getting approval from us, which we might not grant. Mm -hmm. uh, also, so I think it's kind of crappy to blame her specifically when she, I'm sure she did not have any any mm -hmm. say in what the, you know, the she seems to want to take credit for the blog posts like. that, I don't know, she's a pretty savvy business person. I don't know that she doesn't know All right. well, uh, we'll about that. I'd, I'd almost give her enough credit to, to say that she probably does know about these rights issues uh, and has a has a, an opinion on them. I don't think it's a clear cut show. she's wrong and the photographers are, are right. I think it's more complex than that, though. Fair enough. Let's go on to Nias. Uh, you might know him as Matt Black Cube on the subreddits or elsewhere on the internets, writing from hot and sunny Dubai, where apparently the current temp is 102 degrees Fahrenheit Ooh, at 2 o'clock. That's no Pakistan. They're having a horrible heat wave in Pakistan right now, yeah. but that is really hot. Uh, Nias is a project manager with an airline and has some comments on the LOT airline grounding we talked about yesterday. He writes, the design of an airline's business IT network, uh, business IT to distinguish from internal IT that the office users use, 
uh, business IT networks are pretty much the same as they would be for most other networks at airlines. We are currently building a new data center, uh, works for an airline, and these designs involve key components such as web application filters, API managers, among others, to make sure that our systems are not vulnerable to cross-site scripting, DDoS, even legitimate request overloading, etc. Further, during the build, we do extensive stress testing to simulate these situations and make sure it doesn't happen or to identify these vulnerabilities and patch them before the system goes live. So, Nias says, I take issue with the statement, which was made by the CEO of LOT, that all airlines are vulnerable to this kind of attack. I'm sure there are many airlines that are vulnerable, just as there are many that are secure, as is the case with most industries. Just thought I'd throw in my two cents. So he's saying, yeah, it's not that unusual for the flight plan computers to be on a system that would have internet access, but he says you should be able to create a system that wouldn't be susceptible to DDoS anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah, I missed that story. I'd like to go back and read that, considering I am constantly on airplanes. <laughs> yeah, it was a Polish airline that couldn't, their flights couldn't take off because they, they were getting DDoSed for their flight plan filing. Shoosh, yikes. Yeah. God, that's scary. Uh, thank you, Nias, for uh, sending us uh, your expertise. I always 100% appreciate that uh, because we have so many people who are so smart in the audience in so many different ways. Uh, definitely makes the show better. So thank you for that. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And thank you, Veronica Belmont, for sharing your expertise with us today. Uh, you can follow Veronica, twitter.com slash Veronica. Dear Veronica is available at engadget.com slash dear dash Veronica. That's your new show where you answer the world's questions. The world's, all of them. Yeah, no, we are constantly looking for new questions and uh, specifically video questions. That's really what I'm trying to get right now. I'm shooting the next two episodes, episode... Um, Three, four, five and six uh, next week and I would love to put in some of your video questions so if you have a question about anything about technology science you know social media etiquette you know what shoes to wear to your brother's wedding I don't know I don't care whatever it is I want to help you out so just email me veronica at engadget.com or post on twitter using the hashtag dear veronica you can also post on facebook instagram vine whoever you want to get a video to me I'd really appreciate it you know max out 30 seconds um whatever you can fit in there. I just think video stuff is more fun. I, obviously, that's what we do for a living. Um, and I want to see your beautiful, shiny faces on my new show. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, we're having a great time with it. And I think people are getting a kick out of it. So, and you have yeah. a poop emoticon in your background. I totally have a poop emoji, like right there to the left of my ear. It's fantastic. It makes me very happy. Come for the emojis. Stay for the amazing content. <laughs> yes. At gadget.com slash dear dash Veronica. Uh, thank you to our 5,087 patrons that make it possible to have Veronica take some time out of her valuable day to spend with us once a week. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash support is the place where you can go to find our Patreon link. Uh, our, we have 5,087 folks supporting us on Patreon, and you guys are amazing. We can actually start to contemplate the idea of, of doing some of that video ourselves. I know we do the Hangout video, but like we'd like to gussy it up a little, and we can start doing that if we get to our yeah. next milestone. Uh, so you guys are great. Thank you for all your support. I can't thank you enough. DailyTechNewsShow.com slash support. Our email address is feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. You can give us a call 512-59-DAILY. That's 593-2459. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time at player.alphageekradio.com and visit our website, DailyTechNewsShow.com. Scott Johnson's with us tomorrow. You're about to hear him now. Talk to you tomorrow. The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> Great show. What do we call it? Way. Do we have, see, do we have show, show title? Showbot. Showbot TV is for us? Oh, good. So they haven't, uh, they figured out how to do a separate, separate one for Night Attack. Because they're doing their European oh. time show at the same time we're recording this. Yeah, this is the, the, chat, the chat room, not live, which is what is right. the other one. Ooh, so Veronica's the, not Patrick. That's funny. Eh, that is funny. Uh, I like Google, oh, shit button 1.0. Can you use that? <laughs> that's, uh, yep. uh, I don't know. I feel like it's okay, but some people might not. How about I, oh, I could do? I could do a star oh, star. Huh? Oh, How about the oh, oh, crap button? Yeah. Something like that would make it work, for sure. 
I like don't tag me, bro. Don't it's tag funny. me, bro. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Good, good one. Ice thing. Yeah. Adult ebooks are only allowed during night attack hours. <laughs> <laughs> don't tag me, bro. Don't, don't me. tag me, bro. All right. Uh, you guys mull those around in your head for a second while I level eight, and then I'll, we can decide. Hmm. I am level eighting the right show, I think. What if you took the whole analogy of Taylor Swift and the photography and you did it about writing up the concert like for a, for a weekly or a variety? I got to go lock magazine. the front door. I'll be right back. Okay. Be right back. The front door was unlocked? Yeah. Don't worry about it. So wait, what were you saying, Roger? No, I was just thinking about the photography anal or the, the photography thing with Taylor Swift. What yeah. if the you know, what if the example is given that you couldn't write about the show um, or anything you did write up about the show? But that's different. That is absolutely different because uh, you that I don't know. Well, okay, let's well, let's work through this. Right, there is a natural right to your own image, uh, but that's really not what they're asserting here. What they're asserting is we'll let you in the building as long as you agree to these terms. And they could put in the terms that you won't write about the concert. Um, so maybe that is a better analogy than I thought at first. Thing is, they, they wouldn't do that because that would reduce the publicity to a lower, much lower level than they normally get. Whereas limiting the photography, they're saying you can use it on the news where we get the exposure. You just can't use it elsewhere. So I guess the the true analogy would be like you can write about the concert for the newspaper, but you can't write about it anywhere else. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like you cannot. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. Hmm. I and the thing is, I don't think anyone's questioning whether or not Taylor Swift has the right to do that. But sure. it, it seems, at least from a ethical standpoint, somewhat hypocritical. I guess is the is. I don't no. think so. I you think don't think so. I, I really don't. I just don't. You just don't. I just don't. I don't know why. I just don't. Yeah, it's she again. She has the right to do it. It's whether she should. And what you're saying is, there's no reason she shouldn't. It's her concert. She can do what she wants. Yeah. No, I, I, she can do whatever. I'm not saying that she can't. What it's I'm whether she should. That, yeah, whether she, whether. Stop she trying to hold it. Taylor Swift down, Roger. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were such a fan. I'm not. Tom is way more of a fan Shake than I Shake it off, Roger. You know, we're, after this is over, <laughs> Veronica cranks up a Taylor Swift album. The haters are going to hate, 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 hate. I don't hate. I bring the down. The taters are going to tate, 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 tate. You know? The taters. <laughs> the taters are going to tate. Uh, okay, we're going with Todd Whitehead. Oh, or should we go with Don't Tag Me, Bro? I don't know. I don't. I, That's old. Let's yeah, go with the old. Google Oh Shit button. Yeah. What? Getting I told. I definitely want to hear what the Vegetal Fantasy audience has to say. Yeah. About, uh, about the uh, German law. That's no really vaginal crazy. fantasies until after the watershed hour. <laughs> yeah. Oh please. Yeah, I guess they could. Could they watch your show? I, it's not an ebook, so. I, yeah, good question. But they couldn't read the books. Well, that's about purchasing it. You're not actually buying the show. It's free. Yeah. You're not vending the show. Okay, Tom, so real talk. Sure. How much money have you actually spent on Fallout Shelter? $13? I'm like at six. I bought one, <laughs> one three-pack and two separate packs. I can't, I've bought at least two more like eight dollars. Three packs. And then I, I've bought two or three dollar packs. So wait, wait, what is that? Yeah, that's 11. Yeah, I'm out of money now. Just ran out of money. Um, I did that in the early times when I was really like trying to figure out how the thing worked. I haven't done yeah. it in the in a while now because I've been getting lunch boxes through achievements. Ah, ooh. Yeah, have you been paying it because the achievements are great? I pay a lot of attention to that. God, when is she coming back? Take forever to get back. Who? Oh, you're. <laughs> oh, an hour and a half. Wow, she really went far. Oh yeah, I should see. Can you see. send people after people you already sent out? No, you just have to. If they die, you have to revive them. That was one thing I screwed up at the early part. I didn't realize you could revive them. I wasn't paying attention, so I was like, "Well, I don't want these dead bodies cl cluttering things up," and I removed them. 
<laughs> you removed them? I did. Poor things. They'll Poor never people. come back. Jeez. This, well, especially the people out on, on exploring. I just left them out in the wasteland. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Poor I'm folks. I'm Vault 701, by the way. I don't know what you are. That's weird. I'm 721. Oh, this is very close. Yeah. Just 20. We're right near each other. Yeah. Why did you pick that? I don't know. It's just popped into my head. Do you know why I picked mine? No. Think about it harder. <laughs> if you're my friend, you'll know. <laughs> no idea. Oh, <laughs> he needs me. It's my birthday. I know it's your birthday. Oh. Your birthday is the uh, the date of your birthday is a palindrome for Eileen's. Oh yeah, fun. July twelfth. <laughs> Neato, completo. Ooh, the new graphic for my vault door is cool. Oh yeah, the way it opens is pretty yeah, awesome too. Sweet. Yeah, I don't think I can upgrade my vault door. I think I went all yeah, we're fully you're upgraded. All, you're all in. I'm all in on vault door. Did I export the audio already? I don't know. No, yeah, I did, because I came up with the title. All right, so now I just need to check the file. There's going to be a little bonus at the end of today's uh, podcast, which hopefully won't lead to a cease and desist from CBS Interactive. Uh-oh. From CBS? What are you playing? What are you playing at, Merritt? I'm playing at clipping out a piece of a March 2009 Buzz Out Loud. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll be okay. I hope so. I tried to mate a father and daughter by accident. Ew. Oh, they don't, and they don't tell you. They no. just kind of obliquely go, sure is nice to spend time with family. Yeah. That's really <laughs> gross. Why would you do I didn't that, try to, You just put them in a room together and hope for the best. You just don't, you don't know. It's not obvious that they're family. Yeah. Especially if you, I always customize all the names. Well, they have all the same last name. I just I changed the names, though. Oh, I changed the last name, so it's even I worse. Don't. I don't. Yeah, that's way harder. Why would you do that? <laughs> you have a well, I didn't realize me? it would have that, that complication. I was like, Am oh. I, I, I have one called Brian Ibichwood. Hey, wait a minute. If you do do that, do the kids look all funny? No, they don't let it happen. They won't do it. Yeah. Hmm. Literally, they won't do it. They won't do it. I don't know what you they mean. They won't make happy do, face. I understand, I think. They don't make happy faces. <laughs> it's going to be my euphemism for the from now on. Yeah, makes sense. They all, these books, the people in these German books make happy face. Not <laughs> allowed to sell till 6 p.m. Oh, I think that was a woman. <laughs> There's a couple, of the, a couple of the characters you can't immediately tell, too. Yeah. I've, I've noticed that. You guys aren't related, right? Nope. Have, have happy time. Have you heard of the... Um, of the out. cheat where you just keep uh, women in the uh, in the base and you only bring men back from you keep all the men out in the wasteland and then you no. only bring them back when a woman is no longer pregnant why would you keep all the men out they, because you can just workers. keep them because they you can revive them and oh. so you just keep them uh, hunting resources I see and then they're not they're not using up food and water when they're out exploring Ah, that makes sense. That's smart. Uh, I just got attacked by, and I didn't even realize it. That's how good my defenses are. <laughs> That's how badass you are. Nice. Oh, I've got, I've got some dancing couples. Dancing, dancing, make more babies. I did have two people who just didn't, they wouldn't go make happy faces, and they were not related, I'm certain. I had a woman who was just constantly miserable. There's nothing I can do. She's just miserable all the time. She was sad. I think sadness. she's finally unmiserable. I, I don't know what changed it, but maybe she hated her outfit. I maybe. Don't know. Maybe you had her in the wrong job. Maybe. You know, Roger was saying before the show that being uh, in the wrong job can hurt your health. Mm. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. It could be a low, slow, agonizing death, but it'll be a death. <laughs> From radiation. Or stress. I'm going to buy a new pack. Feeling like I need a. You're, you're just going to buy a lunchbox? I'm going to buy a lunchbox. Why? Just to see what I get. I got really excited in the early days of the lunchboxes because I needed all those uh, those coins, but now I'm kind of doing 
well enough. I'm like, when I get it in, the, and when I get a lunchbox and I get uh, co- bottle caps, I'm disappointed. Yeah, because you want like gear. Well, it's not it's not enough bottle caps to make a difference anymore. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm much more excited got, about the gear. I got a one Rataway, great. Yeah, the Rataways especially even worse than hundred caps. Hundred caps isn't bad. Oh, I got fifty a decent, ones. Decent uh, a lever action rifle. Oh, that's good. Ooh, and a, a big thing. Did I get a person? Ooh, Abraham Washington. A Ooh, dweller. nice. Yeah, I got a level 37 guy in a pack one time. Or it's yeah. 35, I guess, at the time. Cool. Welcome to the club, Abraham. <laughs> Where are you? Oh, my gosh. All my kids grew up suddenly since, like, before the show. Wow. I have all these people on coffee break now. He is good at... He's good at P and I. What's I again? That's I have someone named Wild Rice. Wild Rice. <laughs> Wait, that's the name of the character? Yeah. Huh. I named him. I think their name was Rice already. Like one of the characters' name was Rice. And so I just... But not like Brown Rice. I just Rice changed the Rice. first name to Wild. W-Y-L-D-E. Ooh, cool. Glute- glutinous Rice. Making me hungry. S- sticky Rice. Mmm, sticky rice. Ah, uh, man, we went to a Chipotle last night, which we usually like, and it uh, made us both a little sick. Ill. You know, I've never like Chipotles are hit and miss. Some of them are. I, I don't. I, there's a lack of consistency I've noticed across stores. Really? Yeah. Even though I know they're not it's not supposed to be that way, but yeah. I, I generally try to avoid them unless there's nothing else to eat. My lighting got all weird. It got dark. There we go. Whatever. I turned my off. Post, 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 post. post. Okay. It took me. Oh, that's funny. I used uh, asterisks in the headlines and it doesn't show up in the feed URL. It just says Google Osh. (laughs) It's mush. It's mush. The sh is bananas. B a n a n a s. Okay, I think I have not screwed up the feed. There they go. Happy FaceTime. That was fast. Make happy face, my sestra. Make it the babies. I. An award-winning tech startup currently based in Vancouver. I want to talk to you about a new hardware project. Spam. <laughs> okay. What was the hardware project? <laughs> I don't know. Spamity spam project about sending me spam. We're happy face- they want to create an Android that looks like you. They posted it on the blog as a comment to the about page. Even mm. if it is legit, that ain't the right place to do that. Too legit. There's holography. It's a new future. Everyone's, mm. Everyone, not everyone, a lot of people I've been running into at Maybach are super excited for uh, uh, VR. Cause you get to, I'm happy at least that my women can still work when they're pregnant. I would have been really annoyed. They were like, no, nope, They just sorry. had to sit around. They, can't, carry, they can't use their weapons, though. They you can't? If, like, a, a rad roach infestation breaks out, they just run out of the room. They just run around screaming? Yeah. Useful. They can't even use their fists. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's true. No. Nah. So I shouldn't store all my pregnant women in a door by the vault entrance, is what Probably you're saying? Probably not. No. We should actually uh, try <laughs> tell, to... Tell me, tell me what I should do, Roger. What should, should I do? should distribute <laughs> them, right? Because they're assets, and you don't want to put all your assets in one easily... <laughs> You know, you know, you don't want it, all of them eliminated one spot. So you want to kind of separate them to the mm-hmm. three. They're all, they're all in their own rooms doing their jobs. Perfect. Yeah. So Jenny had a uh, an internet uh, emergency, which is why she's not here in the post show, by the way. Um, uh, and I, she left the chat room too. So maybe she just gave up on the internet at bummer. the uh, at the place where she's teaching. Mm. But she'll be back tomorrow. No, never fear. Never, never you fear. Don't you dare fear. Uh, today's Tuesday, though, so 
Stay tuned for a rerun of the European time version of Night Attack this evening, which is <laughs> also still going on on Channel 1 at DivingClub.tv. Uh, and uh, that'll be immediately after I put out this fire in my dorm room. Why is that guy running around? He's not pregnant. See you <laughs> next time.